From Sony to GM to the Secret Service even, there were plenty of object lessons for executives out there. What can business owners learn from 2014's biggest blow-ups? Corporate culture advisor Brian Fielko is CEO of Jetco Delivery and author of Driving to Perfection, and he joins us with our insights, with our insights, with his insights. Brian, how are you? I'm doing great. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Uh, okay, let's start. We want to run through a, a couple of these. The most recent one being Sony. Uh, what lesson do you draw, Brian, from a nefarious group of hackers that may or may not be North Korea hacking your servers and threatening your company? Well, Sony's an, Sony's an interesting one. I mean, this whole year, 2014, has been a, a year of lessons that all of us as CEOs can learn. In the Sony case, I think we have to always expect the unexpected. I mean, I, I imagine you didn't leave the office that day uh, knowing you're going to wake up to being hacked. But once that happens, once something goes wrong, it's up to us as CEOs to dig deep into root cause, to get to the bottom line to fix what happened. And in Sony's case, you know, there's a lot of criticism over whether they should have pulled the movie or released the movie. Well, when you're in crisis mode like Sony, you triage the situation. You make short-term decisions to figure out what's going on to stop the hemorrhaging. Then you can worry about how you're going to release the movie. So in Sony's case, I think that the, the lesson that we've got to take away is that We've got to expect the unexpected. And as CEOs, we have got to be obsessed with building a culture of pre prevention, testing and then testing again our systems and our processes to be sure there are no holes. All right. Uh, let's move on to General Motors. There, the, the recall problems there, well documented. I think the culture there, pretty well documented too. What did they do right? What did they do wrong? Well, I think, you know, when, when everything happened this year and GM recalled more, more cars than they'll produce, uh, GM CEO Mary Barra said, our decision not to upgrade a 60 cent switch was rooted in a culture of cost, meaning implied in there was that they had the wrong value set in place in making their decisions. And she went on to say that we're going to now become a leader in safety and customer customer satisfaction. We're changing our focus. So I think what they did right is they were transparent about the problem. Uh, they didn't sugarcoat the problem. They said that we made short-term decisions based on, you know, on chasing the dollar as opposed to long-term decisions for our employees and our customers. So I think they were transparent once everything went down. But let's go back to when those decisions were made. Those decisions were made, a lot of them, pre-filing, pre-bankruptcy. So the company was under a siege mentality. There was a, 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 probably a culture there that said, look, every penny we save is one more day that we're, you know, we can put off bankruptcy. And that's when a leader has to shine. That's when a leader has to say, yeah, we've got short-term problems. We've got issues. Some of them are serious, but we're going to get through them and never, ever compromise the, uh, the long-term goals and the, your long-term values because you're in a short-term period of crisis. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about something out of the sports world, the NFL. The NFL is a business. Let's talk about Roger Goodell, how he handled the Ray Rice situation. Yeah, the, the, the Ray Rice situation is, is, is really tragic. And, and you know, when, when the NFL came out and the Ravens came out with a two-game suspension, um, and we have to believe they knew exactly what was shown on, on the video, you know, Ray Rice basically knocking his uh, – uh, his, his wife out in an elevator. Uh, you know, I, I think the NFL could have handled that a lot better, and I, I think they handled it, quite frankly, um, poorly. Now they've rebounded, but the key is, in our businesses, we cannot have celebrity justice, meaning that we can't let our superstars get away with standards or get away with behaviors that that other other employees, or in this case, other players, may not. And Ray Rice clearly, at first, was given celebrity justice. Mm. Now, what happened? There was an outrage. Outrage. There was a, a, a cry out from fans, from the networks, from sponsors, from key stakeholders in the NFL that forced a different decision. But, but the facts are the facts, and in this case, he was given uh, uh, a, a sent uh, a, a, a discipline and a punishment that way un undervalued 
the severity of just what he did. So the takeaway that we as business leaders have to ha uh, uh, understand from this is that there are there cannot be any celebrity justice, that we have to hire employees who are both technically excellent and who are in line with our values. Having a technically competent employee who's out of line with our organization's values will sink our organization. It, it's, it's that simple. And I think we can all learn from Ray Rice, and, and I believe the NFL has. Let's talk about the, the Secret Service, not a business, but still an operation, and look, one that everybody wants to see succeed, but it seems like th this is an operation that has had a lot of change forced upon it, and they have struggled to keep up with that. Well, what have they done wrong? Well, the recent study on the, on the Secret Service seemed to say that the culture is, is broken. Mm -hmm. The culture at the Secret Service is broken, and as, as a result... Um, uh, the, the panel came out and said the Secret Service needs a complete leadership overhaul. So if, yeah. I think a couple things. First of all, if uh, an organization is an organization, whether de we're dealing with government, nonprofit, or for-profit businesses, the challenges in building a vibrant culture are the same. There's no difference because people are people wherever you go. But in this case, the new agency administrator, the new person that they bring, they bring in to reform the agency, I believe needs to dig deep into the front lines and understand from the actual people in the Secret Service what's going right and what's going wrong. I have a rule that I, I use in my own business and I use when I speak, which is called the 20-60-20 rule. And what that means is that 20% of the people already know that things are, are broken and are already very inclined to take this in a new direction. 60% are open-minded, and, and you can win them over, and you will win them over. And the bottom 20% have made up their minds. They like the good old days. They're not going to change. The faster the new CEO or the new administrator of the agency weeds out that bottom 20%, the faster the CEO can make change in their organization uh, to addre address the clear defects. You, 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 you're going to have resistors, and you've got to get the resistors out of the way as fast as possible. <laughs> All right, a lot of lessons to be learned. Brian Field, Kyle, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you.